so hard to pull together this conference, most of them in their own time. All our NDT societies depend on voluntary effort year in, year out, and they deserve the credit of all of us in the NDT industry and the public in general. Thank you, President Mazal and Zedinek Preveroski and your team. The opening video demonstrated very clearly, with lots of interesting examples, the real importance of NDT. NDT is vitally important. It's often unseen, but it's the reason that we travel and live in a safe world. It's important both when we're building new things, when we're inspecting things that have been in service, and when we're trying to extend the lives of things that have been in, in operation for a long time. I've got two examples, both close to my heart. Um, an iconic bridge in Scotland, the Forth Road Bridge, was opened in 1964. But non-destructive testing has found multiple breaks in the main suspension cables. So many that a continuous monitoring system, acoustic monitoring system, had to be installed in 2004. They found many more breakages and it was decided that there would need to be a new bridge. So a new bridge is being built at a cost of 1.5 billion pounds. Construction's well underway. So NDT monitoring now is allowing the bridge to continue to be used, but it has given it a life sentence. My second example is a power station, in uh, two nuclear power stations in the UK that I worked on when they were being built in the late 70s and early 80s. Well, in August this year, the owner of the power stations, EDF Energy, reported that the four reactors had had to be shut down to allow a detailed program of boiler inspections to take place. And this was because during in-service inspection and monitoring by long-range guided wave ultrasound, a relatively new technique, that a crack had been found in one of the boiler spines. The right-hand picture shows a boiler being lowered into its space in the reactor. There are 32 of these, and the whole boilers hang from a spine tube, uh, and a crack in there is serious. Safety is paramount, so EDF have shut down the reactors, and I calculated uh, that the loss of generation revenues is about 50 million pounds a month until this problem is solved, and I'm sure the so solution will involve NDT, diagnostic technologies, and continuous monitoring. Our conference, the 11th European Conference, sits in a chain of a four-year cycle of conferences between world conferences. The last in Durban in 2012 and the next in Munich in 2016. Last year we had the Asia-Pacific Conference in Mumbai. That was a great success. Next year we have the Pan American Conference in Cartagena in Colombia. But here we are in Europe. All these conferences are very important because as um, Dr. Pershka said, we need to share technology, share experiences, we need to recognize that NDT is a global activity supporting global businesses. And whether you consider aeroplanes or trains or nuclear power stations or petrochemical plants or pipelines, this is absolutely true. Trade and non-destructive testing and diagnostic technologies have become globalized. The design, the building, and operation of plant and machinery is globalized. Companies procure equipment from all around the world and bring it together, increasingly buying equipment and materials from developing countries. Wherever they procure equipment and materials, they have to use local NDT services. And it's vital that those NDT services offer the quality that we require, because the safety, reliability, and the availability of whatever's being built will depend on a whole supply chain of companies and contractors, each with their own NDT personnel and equipment. Against this background, the International Committee for NDT works to further the, the reliability of non-destructive testing and to share technology around the globe. First meeting was in 1955. Meetings were originally held just every four years, but then we started to have more meetings 
and we also created a committee, the Policy and General Purposes Committee, to link to the regional groups, now becoming federations. The Asia-Pacific, the African, the European, and the Pan-American. We got a new constitution in Rome in, 20, in 2000, and we became legalized as a, a, a not-for-profit organization, registered in Vienna in 2008. The members of ICNDT are the national NDT societies. There are more than 60 in total, and I think there are approaching 40 present here today. So I'd like those representatives of national NDT societies just to stand and we'll give you a round of applause to welcome you. The representatives of the ICNDT member societies, stand up please. All of you. And if there's anybody here from a country that doesn't have a National NDT Society which is a member of ICNDT, you should come along to the General Assembly meeting and we'll introduce you and you can talk about setting up your own society. We have liaison also with important international organisations that are interested in NDT, like the ISO, like the World Federation for NDE Centres, the International Atomic Energy Agency, and now the International Society for Condition Monitoring, because we want to stress that NDT is non-destructive testing and diagnostic technologies. Our members elect a chairman, executive committee and secretariat to manage our affairs. And I'd like the executive committee now to stand up and turn around and show your faces. So these are the people who you have to blame if things are not done right. The executive committee, please. ICNDT Executive Committee, turn around. Our Secretariat is provided by the British Institute of NDT and we, we're grateful for their help and for David Gilbert as our, as our Secretary. Meetings of the General Assembly are held every two years, including one at this regional conference. Now the General Assembly in Durban confirmed five key areas for action and these are the basis of our strategic plan. Support for NDT societies, promotion of the importance of NDT, NDT qualification and certification, NDT education and research, NDT radiation safety and security. We will update our strategic plan this week through to our actions, through our, to our next elections in 2016. I want to mention some of the things we've been doing and I would like to mention the launch of three major ICNDT initiatives to harmonize certification. A multilateral recognition agreement, MRA, a personnel certification body assessment scheme, a PCBA, and the examination question bank, the EQB. <coughs> Under the multilateral recognition agreement, 30 30 national societies, listed in the slide, have signed the agreement and thereby formally agreed to recognize the certification awarded by the personal certification bodies which are registered with ICNDT. Currently, we have seven certification bodies registered with ICNDT. The Australian Institute, INSPEC Serfionti in Finland, UDT CERT in Poland, RELACRA in Portugal, RTC in Russia, UKSRINDT in the Ukraine, and PCN. Those seven personal certification bodies are recognized and registered with ICNDT. And we're looking and expect more applications. In fact, we've heard about more applications already this week. The next initiative was the ICNDT Examination Question Bank. This is a very important platform for harmonization. It contains more than 7,000 questions over three levels, level one, level two, and level three, and seven methods, plus questions on TOFT and questions on radiation safety. They're classified by industrial sector, and they can be combined for multi-sectors. They comply with the ISO TR25107 syllabus, they're available in English and Spanish. 
and they're contained in a management application software which has been updated. It generates questions for examination papers and it generates data outputs for statistical analysis. It's available for purchase by ICNDT member nominated PCBs. Users so far include Korea, Argentina, South Africa, Finland and China. We have just revised our ICNDT guide um, to a new version, October 2014, which, subject to transport arrangements, will be on our ICNDT stand. Um, the guide has been reinforced to reinforce the key messages in the new international standard. It includes recommendations to NDT societies and certification bodies which operate outside their own national boundaries and encourages them to work closely with the NDT societies in the countries where they're working. It has an appendix on the MRA, the PCBA and the EQB. It has an appendix on ASME to explain how ASME codes are somewhat, have moved forward somewhat towards recognizing EN 9712 certification. And finally, it has an appendix listing the personal certification bodies which offer ISO 9712 certification and their status, whether they are accredited and whether they are registered with ICNDT. There are other actions underway in ICNDT to better document how different certification bodies are implementing ISO 9712 and to debate the open items in the standard. This work demonstrates that while different PCB schemes can be, can be recognized, they are not identical. It also provides the opportunity to identify best practice and influence future updates of the standard. The next area of activity is education and research. We've promoted regular workshops at major conferences, including one at QNDE in Baltimore and another one at the APC NDT in Mumbai on NDT education at all levels, graduate, technician and graduate. At this conference we have, as has been mentioned already, a workshop on NDT research on Wednesday afternoon as part of the European Research Day. The objectives of this workshop are to seek to demonstrate the importance of NDT in the 21st century and to identify critical research needs. We want to develop a prestigious booklet and a lecture suitable to present to senior representatives of engineering institutions and academies of science. Some words about NDT research. NDT research extends from the fundamental research through to applied R&D. At the beginning of this end funnel, you will see many, many techniques that are invented. One of them, radiography, was invented by a Nobel Prize winner, Röntgen, and that technique and many others have gone through to being fully established techniques, standardized with training and certification set up. As they move through this funnel of technology readiness levels, they move from laboratory to prototype to field trials to fully commercialized. I want to make the point that NDT research is valuable right through this funnel, from brand new techniques and fundamental science through to research that is connected to feedback from field experience of established techniques. Valuable opportunities for research at all technology levels. I welcome the support by the Czech government for research development and innovation and hope that, the, um, that Jan Marek and Jiri Drahos will recognize the importance of research opportunities in NDT in the Czech Republic. So we hope to see some of you, many of you, at our workshop on Wednesday afternoon. Finally, our vision for the future of ICNDT. I think we're moving forward now. We're more, we, can be, we are becoming more mature and we need closer cooperation with the regional federations. We don't want to compete with the regional federations, we want to work more closely with them. 
And this is part of our plans now in, in ICNDT, which we'll be discussing at our meetings this week. I imagine in future jointly funded projects with regional groups and with member societies and external agencies. Our objective will be to maximise efficiency, avoid duplication and do the most valuable work that we can find. We want to use more professional support and we want to give a faster response so we move from an, an idea to a result more quickly. So we imagine much more of a formal relationship with the regional federations and we will be moving forward on that. Just to complete, ICNDT adds its thanks to the platinum, diamond, gold, silver and bronze sponsors. To all the exhibitors, speakers and attendees, thank you for your support for this conference. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Everybody, please take advantage of the opportunities which the conference and the exhibition offer to meet and share experience and knowledge from colleagues around the world. And thank you for listening to me.